Hey everyone, and welcome to another Game Explain discussion. I'm your host, Derek Bittner, and I'm joined today by Ash Paulson to give our predictions for the upcoming ARMS Direct. So let's get started. Alright Ash, so the rumors were true, everybody thought we were going to get one more Direct before E3, and yeah, it's happening. Uh, but it's a little bit more focused than I think many people realize because it's only about ARMS with a new trailer for Splatoon 2 at the end. And I think you, we were talking about this a little bit before we started this discussion, and you kind of put it the right way. It's almost like the last Direct 2.0. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it feels like a take two of the previous Direct, which was, and it was kind of an ARMS and Splatoon 2 focused Direct. Now, I guess this one is more focused on ARMS with a Splatoon 2 trailer at the end, but it does just feel kind of like the second permutation of what we just watched. So it's maybe not feeling quite as exciting to me as a new Direct announcement normally would. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I'm sort of getting that feeling as well. Uh, I mean, not that I'm not excited to see what they, ha what else they have to show about ARMS. There's still a lot we don't know. They could show off more of the two-on-two -two mode. We could get a hint of uh, what single-player content there might be. There might be new characters, stuff like that. But it's still one of those things where we just got it. It's not quite as exciting as something brand new. I mean, let's be honest, it's a little weird that we haven't seen anything from Pokemon yet. Yeah, I mean, I think that's kind of what I thought the Direct was going to be, I mean, especially given the history of, of uh, the timing of Pokemon-themed Directs. I thought that I mean, we might get, like, a Pokemon Stars Direct or something, mm -hmm. uh, you know, assuming that's actually real, but uh, we didn't, and it's going to be another ARMS-focused Direct, and I don't want to make it sound like I'm, like, going in on ARMS. Like, I, I just tend to find the specific game-focused Directs to be a little more, or a little less interesting overall, just because there are no surprises, usually. Like, I, I for me... The coolest thing about directs is, or the surprises, like the surprising announcements and cool things like that. And when you have a direct focused on a game, usually the surprises are not quite as plentiful. Now you say that, and the last time, like, I think to the Smash focused direct and how we got all kinds of crazy stuff for that. <laughs> right. Well, and, and and of course, yes. I mean, I, I the Smash directs would be my the, like my personal exception, but. In general, like, even the Smash Directs, as excited as I was about those, I really just like the traditional, you know, the general Directs that we don't really know what we're going to get. We might get some 3DS announcements, we might get some, get some Switch announcements, we might get some DLC of a game we weren't expecting. Like, I just like the general ones because you don't exactly know what you're going to get, and, you know, sometimes you get a nice surprise, sometimes you don't. But either way, you don't know what you're going to get, but here, it sounds like we know exactly what we're in for. Yeah, it definitely seems that way, and I mean, I'll be honest, I'm excited for ARMS. I still think the game looks yeah. really fun, I think there's a lot of potential there, and it's going to be good to know more information about it one way or another, and I I'm, I, I have hopes for this game, I don't know, I yeah. I had the same sort of feeling that I'm, that I'm currently having for ARMS that I did for Splatoon in a lead up to its release, and a lot of people aren't having that same feeling, they're not sure exactly how to take ARMS. In fact, when many saw that they announced right off the bat that a Splatoon 2 trailer was going to be attached to this Direct, they were like, oh, Nintendo doesn't have enough confidence in ARMS, so they need to toss in Splatoon in order to make sure people watch. That could be it. I, I, I've been kind of just getting that as just they just want to promote Splatoon 2 more, though, because the game's going to come out in July. I don't... I mean, ARMS does feel like... I don't know. It feels like there's a lot of support and a lot of hype behind the game from a certain, like, subset of the of Nintendo's audience. But it does seem like there is a much wider swath of people who just kind of are waiting to see. I, I don't really get the sense that people actively don't care or don't want to play it. I think it's more that there's just kind of like a wait-and-see approach, like, is this game going to be as good as it looks like it might be? Mm -hmm. And, I mean, to me, it, it does look like it's really going to deliver. I mean, i played it at various events now, and, you know, I've generally enjoyed myself, but I also see this being the kind of game where I end up being really terrible at it in a, com in a competitive sense and, like, stop wanting to play it online very quickly because I'm always losing. Because I, I don't see this being the kind of game that I get really all that good at. <laughs> so we'll see. But it does look really fun. And, I mean, every time I've played it, it has been fun. Yeah. See, I, have a, I feel like I have a better shot at this game being decent competitively online than I do with <laughs> Smash Brothers, that's for sure. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, I haven't played it at all yet, so I don't know the exact uh, ways that it hap you, know, you play or anything like that, or any of the little minutia of the moveset. But, I mean, that's what I'm kind of hoping for, is to see what makes this game worth buying like what right uh like we we've gotten character reveals we've seen stages we've seen hints of other ideas and stuff they can do i want them to really show us 
what makes this game worth buying. Show us the online options. So show us how the single player campaign might be. Show us, you know, something beyond just new characters. And we know there's right. more characters coming. We know there's at least three new three more characters coming based off the last direct. So we'll probably see one or two of those. Yeah, I mean, considering the game comes out basically a month from now, I'm thinking we'll get more than just one new character. I'm thinking, especially since we know there are three left, I'm not sure if we'll get all three, but I bet we'll get at least two. Mm. And, and I could see them maybe, like, saving, the, you know, the tenth character for, like, a, just a one-off reveal, you know, closer to the game's release. Like, they just release a new character, kind of like they did with uh, Helix. But, yeah, I, I could see them maybe doing, like, two characters tomorrow. But I, I think we'll definitely at least get some new characters, and... Yeah, I'm thinking we'll get an, a broader look at kind of some of the other stuff the game offers, like you were saying, Derek. Hopefully online. I would like to see the suite of online options revealed, but I'd also like to see the control options revealed, because we already know that you can you can play with motion controls, but you don't have to. You can play with traditional button controls, but they haven't talked about those very much. Mm -hmm. So I would really like to get an in-depth look at all the different ways you can play this game. Yeah, the most we've seen so far is from an Edge magazine preview right. where they talked about playing the game with the joypad on its side. Uh, the Joy-Con on its side, excuse me. Uh, and it definitely seemed ex extremely limiting in that case where you couldn't even like, yeah. curve the arms or anything like that. And it was... It, uh, it definitely limited your options. Now, granted, if you're doing a two-player mode when you only have two Joy-Con, at least you're both under the same... Uh, limitations but i have to imagine con controls are significantly different at least you can do a little bit more if you're using either the uh the the joy con grip or the uh the pro controller and i'd like to see right. how exactly that works as well yeah i, I think uh, probably more than holding the joy con on its side most people really want to know how the pro controller works and how also just holding both joy con vertically works um i know that's you know those are the two control schemes I'm most interested in, interested in learning more about, um, you know, not counting the motion controls. Because I actually didn't hate the motion controls. In fact, I liked them. When I played with uh, Andre back at the event in January, I thought the motion controls worked pretty well. I don't know how much I'd want to use them in competitive play, but for casual, like, you know, like a party-type setting, I thought they were actually pretty responsive and accurate, and especially, I mean, compared to some of the motion controls you've gotten in previous games with, you know, that really try to ask for complex movements and don't quite give you the results you want. Mm -hmm. And ARM seems like it actually does. Yeah, well, that's what I've kind of noticed, at least maybe from the stuff I've viewed, and then maybe that's why I'm a little bit more excited for it the most, but I see sort of this this elegant implementation of the motion controls where you just reach out, uh, push your arm forward, you don't have to actually do a full one punch, just move your arm forward, and then just curve your uh, your wrist slightly in order to curve the actual controls. And it's, I mean, based on yeah. all the videos, that seems to work pretty well, so it's not like it's going to be even overtaxing. It's all about like really getting those motions down, knowing how to do it, pushing the buttons at the right time, and getting this really good feedback on it. And that what's ha that's what has me excited for the game. Although I can tell you that when you get into the heat of a match and you're just trying to throw out punches desperately, all that considered, <laughs> oh yeah, you just press the buttons at the right time and just make these little nuanced movements, all that goes right out the window and you immediately start flailing around like an <laughs> idiot, like you do in any other motion controlled competitive mm -hmm. game. So, but you know, like by the end, I was definitely sweating because I was like, whoa, I, I moved so much more than I needed to, but that's because I really got into it, which is a good thing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. To me, that you're just button mashing and <laughs> just in motion control <laughs> Basically. form. Basically. Like, yeah, please, that's exactly something what it is. hit, something work, something do do this. <laughs> yeah, and and uh, you know, I mean, I I will maintain that that worked to a degree. I mean, obviously, neither Andre nor I knew what we were doing because that was our first time playing it. But I did win, so you know, flailing around does at least <laughs> if you're playing against someone else who doesn't know what they're doing, then it works. Yeah, I, that, that, that's what I'm interested in. It's like how, like, because there does seem to be a lot more depth here than you would first assume when you first saw it with all the gloves and how you have different uh, options for each one, and it just changes it up. And I, I, yeah. I, I really would like to see like just more and more options. And it's just, like I said, I, I don't really have any grand predictions or anything like that for ARMS. I just want a better sense of what the game is going to provide. Yeah, just like on, on an overall scale, like different modes, like you know, what's the single-player mode going to look like? And again, what are the online options going to look like? Mm -hmm. And is there going to be a, you know, what what might there be a story mode? What what might that look like? That kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And I agree. I want to I want to see this game fleshed out beyond 
the core gameplay that we know about. We know what ARMS is as a game, but we don't know what it offers as a full suite of, you know, options and modes mm-hmm. and things like that. Yeah, and I'm hoping for a really kooky, like, arcade mode. Like, get me, some, get me invested in these characters. Show me what they're all about, and yeah. let's do something crazy with them, you know? That's what I'm yeah, hoping I- to see. And I mean, I'll, I'll say one thing, like one thing that's been really consistently strong about this game is the character designs and, and the the character reveals. I really liked Min Min, I really, really liked Helix's designs, so I'm ex- really genuinely excited to see what new character or characters we might see tomorrow, because this is a really strong lineup of characters design-wise, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's always interesting to see what like what they drew inspiration from as far as just somebody with stretchy arms. <laughs> Yeah, I know they do that. Yeah, well, I mean, I mean, I'm, I'm still, I'm gonna say that Spring Man's obviously based on the Mega Man Seven boss, and they still have to get a DLC costume in there for, <laughs> for the other Spring Man, the real Spring Man, the real Spring Man, sure, <laughs> the OG Spring Man. <laughs> that would be pretty funny if they if they managed to do that. And other people are like, you need to have Little Mac in there. <laughs> I t- right? No, yeah, Little Mac and. God, they even uh, well in the recent most recent Punch Out, they had DK with boxing gloves. So God, maybe even get DK in there. Not really, but. You know, like, I, I can see, I mean, that would be cool, but at the same time, kind of like Splatoon, I don't think I want to see this become, like, a, you know, a bunch, I don't, I don't want to see a bunch of Nintendo, like, other guest characters from other series. Yeah, exactly. ARMS is very much its own thing, and it should stay that way, I think. Yeah, exactly. At least for the first game, make sure it gets yeah. its own identity out there and keeps it consistent. As much fun as it would be to see those other characters show up, uh, maybe as maybe as a little bonus here and there, but I they the focus should definitely be on the new characters and the new characters all seem pretty fun and interesting. Like I yeah I still love Min Min. Like I think she might still be my favorite <laughs> yeah. just because it's brilliant to use ramen noodles as I, yeah. as your basis for a character. It's like ah that's so cool. <laughs> yeah no I love that. Like I, I'm really I'm I'm a big fan of just the kind of goofy over the top fun style they're going for like it, it feels like they're they're revealing characters that are very much like the original street fighter 2 cast but in a much more modern and obviously 3d setting yeah <laughs> i mean it, it kind of does work where you think of um ribbon girl as chun li and uh <laughs> min min is cami not sure who mechanica would be but <laughs> right well I just, I just i just i guess i mean in terms of how like just how different each character's silhouette is mm-hmm. like there's no way you're going to mistake Dalsim for, like, Blanca or E. Honda. It, much in the same way, there's really no way you're going to mistake Mechanica for someone like Master Mummy or Ribbon Girl. Like, they're, they're all very unique from character to character. Yeah, and that's always that's been a very strong with this game ever since we first saw it. And uh, yeah. looking, looking forward to seeing what else they show. Um, but unless you have any other predictions, I'd say we let's go ahead and move on to Splatoon 2. Nope, I'm good. All right, then... What do you think we'll see from this trailer of Splatoon 2? <laughs> well, I know what I hope we'll see, and what I hope we'll see is the single-player mode. I loved the Splatoon 1 campaign. Mm-hmm. I loved the single-player mode in that game, and I've been just waiting and waiting and waiting to see what the Splatoon 2 campaign is going to be like. And what I'm hoping for is a much more fleshed out, much more, you know, much longer-lasting single-player experience. So... They haven't talked about that yet. You know, they, they've talked obviously talked about some of the new and returning stages. They've talked about Turf War. They've talked about Salmon Run. I feel like it's time to talk about single player. So that's my prediction. I think you're on the right track. I, it does feel like it's the right time to show off the single player, especially since we've been having those Squid Sisters stories. And I've been too busy to actually cover the latest one, but I don't, so I don't know if you've read it or not. But in the latest one, uh, Callie's missing. <laughs> like Marie can't find her. Wait, have I read the latest Squid Sister stories? <laughs> those are like the most exciting things of every... Whenever those new stories go up, that's like the most exciting thing that day. Of course I'm caught up on Squid <laughs> Sister stories. There you go. But yeah, yeah. I mean, that, maybe, that, maybe that leads into whatever happens in the uh, direct where, oh no, Callie's missing, we gotta find her or something to that effect. Who knows? I hope so. I love... I mean, we've talked about this before, but I just love how they're having so much fun with the lead-up in Splatoon 2's marketing and playing with the story and kind of marrying it with real-world stuff. It's so cool. Mm-hmm. I really want to see what the Octarians are up to this time around and uh, what what they'll do with the Octolings and all the different methods there. And I just... Mm-hmm. I really do just want to see more of the single-player campaign because it was just so good. Like, what crazy new ideas will they show off? 
Well, and not only that too, but you know, Splatoon One single player campaign, as fun as it was, it always felt as kind of it felt like it was kind of a side mode compared to the main attraction, which of course was multi online multiplayer and turf wars and all that. But now that Splatoon has kind of gotten its it's found its feet as like a big new Nintendo IP, I'm hoping and thinking that Splatoon 2 single player mode will actually feel more fleshed out in like its own legitimate mode as opposed to like this you know, side thing they threw in there to kind of get people ready for Turf War. Mm -hmm. That'd be my hope too, but I don't know why I have this gut feeling that it won't be that more fleshed out than the original. I don't know why I think yeah. that, but it just feels like that because, it, I, I don't know, the multiplayer still seems like the main focus, and it makes sense to just use the single player once again to get people used to the new systems at play here, especially since this might be a lot of people's first time with Splatoon. Uh, since they might have right. missed out on it in, in, uh, on the Wii U version. So I'm, I'm honestly not sure, but even if it is just more of a side mode, I'm so looking forward to the bosses because those oh, yeah. were so much fun. And, they were. Uh, I, it's, there really is going to be a lot of pressure on them uh, in, in this game to match something as great as DJ Octavio for the final boss. Oh yeah, no, I've gone on record several times saying that is one of the absolute best examples of a final boss battle, just in terms of presentation, the mechanics that you know, you're know required to, to deal with in order to win, like it is exactly like a, the perfect blueprint of what a great final boss should be. Mm. And they're going to have to work really hard to top that, because wow, what a great fight that was. <laughs> Absolutely, I, I, I'm definitely looking forward to it, but what else do you think could happen other than... Um, than the single player. Do you think they'll do more of a tour of Inkopolis Square, or do you think they'll show off a new mode, or something else crazy? I'm thinking maybe a tour of Inkopolis Square, because we haven't seen much of that, really. We haven't really seen any of the, the old shopkeepers, like any of their new shops, or, or their new looks, or anything like that, as far as I know. So, it feels like it's time for a tour of Inkopolis Square. I mean, we got a new mode last time, so, assuming we get single player, then it seems to make sense to me to get kind of like a general tour of Inkopolis Square, see where all the old shopkeepers are at now, like what their new shops look like, if they have new designs. It just kind of feels like it would be a good time to do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the only one we've seen up to this point is Krusty Sean, and uh, we've heard about the others and what they're up to, so it's sort of uh, thanks to the Squid right. Sister stories. I got an, a slight idea of what they might be doing now, but uh, it's, it's definitely not concrete, so I, I would also appreciate a tour of uh, Inkopolis uh, square and get us a better idea of what this new place is like, what this new hub has to offer. Uh, as far as a new mode, I, I think that one's the like least likely, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it could happen, but I don't know. It just feels like the right time to really go into this single player, especially since the last time we got a, a trailer was for Salmon Run, and they talked about, don't worry, we're going to be talking about the Octarian soon. Well, <laughs> right. It's time. <laughs> it does seem like it's time for that. And I wonder if, if w along with that, is going to come news of playable Octarians. Like, I wonder if finally, because remember in Splatoon 1, all those hacks, like, people were data mining and hacking, and, like, we kept thinking that a patch was going to come to enable, like, playable Octolings. Mm -hmm. But it never happened. So I'm wondering if it's finally going to happen in Splatoon 2. I really hope that's the case. Uh, I have a feeling if, they, if it is going to be the case, they're not going to show it. Uh, it, it feels like one of those things, if there's going to be playable Octolings, it's going to be something that they'll keep hidden, keep hidden, and then two days before the game comes out, hey, we have Octolings now. <laughs> right. Because that's, yeah, that that's what Nintendo likes to do. They did it with Rosalina in Super Mario 3D World. They did it with uh, a couple other, I forget some of the other examples, but they did it with a lot of other games where they revealed big things right before it came out to try to get entice people to buy the game even more and all they do yeah. really do is spoil the game <laughs> right exactly so i hope i i could honestly see them doing the same thing where oh no 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 octolings <laughs> we don't have anything to say but then like a week before by the way guys you can play as octolings now check it out <laughs> right Right. No, I could totally see them taking that approach. Mm -hmm. And meanwhile, our, we'll, like, our embargo would be like, don't talk about the Octolings. <laughs> right. Ex yeah, ex that would, that's kind of what happened with us uh, for Smash, too. Because like, we had heard from other legit sources that we knew what stages were in the game, but then we couldn't talk about certain stages, even though everyone else knew they were in the game, too. It was so weird. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's just one of those odd things. But hey, yeah. at the very least, if we do get playable Octolings, I'll be very happy. Uh, that'll, yeah. I'll probably choose one honestly because I, I really do like their design 
Uh, oh yeah. So yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens. But honestly, I mean, there's real again. There's not too much else to say because we're only getting a trailer, so it's not going to be right. too much. It's going to be maybe two minutes long at the most. Uh, all I know is that once it's up. Time for analysis. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I, I'm already feeling bad for what you're going to have to go through with that. But maybe it won't be a too, you know, super long, super in depth trailer. You know, possibly, mm-hmm. but it probably will be. Oh, if they're going, if they're doing single, <laughs> if they're doing single player, there's definitely going to yeah. be plenty to look at. <laughs> yeah, and just no, that's that's for like sure. the backgrounds to see if we're underground again, to see if the levels are like uh, laid out, different Octarians, different ways of. Uh, moving around or obstacles uh, whatever there is so many things to look at and it's gonna be hell (laughs) yeah so yeah yep well any other thoughts on uh the upcoming direct not this specifically but i do have a related aside oh okay and i was just thinking about how because they've been having so much fun with the marketing for splatoon 2 i was thinking how cool it's going to be when inevitably inkling is announced for smash switch and i'm just trying to think of all the ways they could have fun with that like oh look at the inkling is in this strange new habitat this is a we've lost a dimension here what we're looking at the inklings from 2d where are they right now like i can totally see them having just going wild with the introduction for them Mm, oh yeah i could see it too and that's all that was just my random thought i was like oh that's gonna be really cool when that does happen (laughs) maybe it'll happen at e3 who knows I hope so, I, but I fully believe like whenever that does happen, Smash is a thing. Inkling, it makes too much sense. Mm-hmm. And I still fully think that's going to happen. Yeah. I, uh, yeah. The other thought I had, and again, it's it's not about necessarily about these two games. It's more about Pokemon. It's like, wow, we haven't seen anything from Pokemon yet. And I yeah. highly doubt we're going to get another Direct or anything like that unless we just get, hey, this is coming, <laughs> just randomly. I mean, well, the, the last Direct was basically just a month ago, so it's possible that we could get, like, one more right before E3, but I kind of agree that it's somewhat unlikely that there will be another one before E3. Yeah, it just it feels like it's getting a little too late where the, you might as well just save it for E3 where it can be huge, huge, huge news. <laughs> yeah, especially Pokemon. Mm-hmm. So yeah. we'll, we'll see what they end up doing, but uh, I'm definitely looking forward to this Direct and what they show off, and, I, you know, at the very least, just hope it entertains me. Yeah, and I mean, it's with, with like I said, with the marketing they're doing for Splatoon 2 and the whole approach they're taking, at the very least, even if there aren't that many exciting announcements, you know it's going to be entertaining. Yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, I think that covers it for our ARMS discussion, so thank you for watching, and if you like this video, be sure to like us on Facebook and Twitter at Game Explain, and make sure to subscribe to Game Explain for more on the Direct and other things gaming as well. Until next time, bye.